at one point I was so bad off, I remember asking God, take me because I can't do this. It hurt so bad to breathe. So some ambulance got called and 911 got called. And fire department came and ambulance came and I think she said she didn't want to go to the hospital because she didn't want to get COVID. <laughs> and uh, the EMT says, honey, you don't have to worry about that. You already got it. Well, that's the last time we saw each other for about five days. It was not pleasant. We can't be there constantly with them, which is something odd with your patients. Normally you can go in the room without any second thought, uh, but you have to program your day. You have to map out your day a little bit better so you're not, one, using a bunch of resources to get into the room, but two, just to be efficient throughout your day. The loneliness, the sheer loneliness of you know, being a patient with COVID, you know, was one of the major um, disadvantages for the patients. And I quite re recall one of the patients I took care of very early in the pandemic told me that the loneliness was even more um, difficult for him to bear than the illness itself. We are not used to being separated and that we were very much concerned about the other because the last time we saw each other, we knew this was bad. And those nurses, they, they would just come in, well, I just saw your husband. <laughs> he told me the story about so-and-so, and she would just come relate it back to me, because we're big storytellers. We've lived a lot together, and we love to tell our stories. As hospitalists, we work very well with other team members, but with COVID patients, we had to go the extra mile and make sure we're linking up with our nurses and our patient care um, technicians. And it was Dr. Amu's love and concern and knowing we were joined at the hip that one of us didn't need to go home without the other. So she got home care set up. She got us out at the same time. She came in and out and in and out of our rooms that last day to make sure everything was perfect. And it was like they were all going, they're gonna see each other. <laughs> you know, they're gonna to leave together. And there were so many nurses and stuff in the hallway and they were just all, you could see their eyes just twinkling. They were so excited. They're going home together. Oh, it feels great. Um, just seeing them roll in the wheelchair right down the hallway. They always pass the nurse's station and we're all saying goodbye to them and they're always waving. They're always saying thank you. Um, and it's just a great feeling because you know that that's one less person that this pandemic has taken. Knowing that we were able to help them, not so much as fix them, but help them because they, they're in the fight. We, we are giving them all the resources they can to survive and then push forward um, as much as we can, but they are the ones fighting this virus. During the last week of March, I started to feel really, really tired. And April 4th happened to be Easter Sunday and I could barely function. I could barely breathe. I was, I was in a quite a state, so um, I went to the emergency room. And when they took me in the ER, they put me on what's called a high flow machine. And I actually was, they were forcing oxygen in me um, because my saturation was so low. In general, the patients that we see that have had COVID are, are in a lot of ways very different than the other pulmonary rehab patients that we see. Their difficulties carrying on their everyday life is new, whereas the typical patient has been dealing with these things over a long period of time. The people here are so, they're so friendly. They are very much involved in your care. They're involved in your progress. And they urge you on and, and encourage you to, you know, to do better. Debbie comes in with a lot of goals. She has a lot of grandchildren. She's an active person and likes to, to be active, and she does push herself. 
trying to accomplish some of those goals. Some are as simple as picking up her two-year-old granddaughter. She's also trying to wean off of oxygen. She wasn't on supplemental oxygen before having COVID, and now she is um, having to, to wear uh, oxygen continuously when she exerts herself. You can tell when somebody's going through the motions, and then you can tell when people really care whether or not you know, you're getting better. We, we interact as, as a group as far as the other patients, and I mean, it's really been a very positive experience to, um, to be able to, to have this, you know, and, and know that I'm getting better too. She's gonna continue to get stronger. We were able to actually decrease the flow rate of oxygen that she was on today, and she did okay. So hopefully we can continue doing that, and hopefully she can, you know, meet the goal of getting off oxygen. I think she'll get strong enough to pick up her 30 pound granddaughter. You know, it's been a real journey and coming close to, to, to almost dying. I mean, you know, you, you reevaluate your whole life. You really do. What's important? My grandkids, my children, my husband. Thank you for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. I just want to say I'm so grateful for all, for all the people at Duke because everybody was wonderful.